All right, welcome everyone to today's session, which is designed to be a Teams orientation. Whether you've been using Teams for a while, whether you're just getting a little more familiar with it or your department's new to it, or you're new to the university, this session is designed as a general overview to get you more comfortable and confident using um, some of the, the basic things in Teams. We're gonna cover a lot of content today, so uh, feel free to ask questions in the chat. Uh, we do have it kind of broken apart, uh, the session, into segments. So we'll be covering specific topics such as calling and chats and meetings and go over that one at a time so that we can understand those individually. Um, I'm Amanda Pritchard. I am the Microsoft 365 Specialist at UT Dallas. I'm joined here with Dennison Rice, who's going to be helping to uh, share some content today, as well as to help manage the chat. So if you haven't already, take a peek in our chat. Um, if you just hover over the icons at the top, the little chat bubble, it'll appear on the right side of your screen. We're going to put any key links, any key resources or information in that chat. So be sure that you navigate there. Uh, I think he posted something and is just needing that reassurance thumbs up that you got that post and that you're able to see it and interact with our content today. So I work in OIT, so does Denison, and um, I put on the screen our mission. In, in Amanda's version, it is, we're here to help. We provide tech support to campus. Um, so if there's a need that you have, know that we're here to support you. We want to partner with you and work beside you so that some of the um, frustration or alienation that might come with technology can be alleviated by partnering with us. Quick fast facts. Um, if you have been in a session with me before, would you go ahead and use the little raised hand emoji? It's at the top bar of your screen and it's a little smiley face with the hand. So we're just, I'm getting a quick feel for how many um, have been in here before. I'm scanning and looking as those hands are raising. Okay, so um, I'm seeing, oh, Denison raised. Good. I'm so glad we've done this before, Denison. This is not our first time. Um, so I see right now about 10 hands raised, which is awesome because that means we have a lot of new people who have not attended this session uh, previously. So welcome, I'm so thrilled that you're joining us. So a couple of fast facts. We're in a Teams webinar and I know that it looks and it feels different than what a Teams meeting traditionally looks and feels like. Uh, so just some fast facts, you, your video and your audio aren't on. If you get another call, if you have to um, pop in and out of the room, that's okay. We're not going to be able to see or hear that, so it doesn't interfere with the session at all today. Chat option right now is open. We're going to leave it open uh, as long as we can. If it becomes uh, real chatty, we might turn it off for certain portions uh, just to ensure that we're, we're getting through the content and that everybody's able to follow along clearly. You can use the raised hand feature. We just did that, so y'all show that you can do that. And then in addition, we have the emojis. So my team, if you want to go ahead and throw some emojis up, you'll be able to see how those emojis can come on the screen um, just as we're, we're talking today. If there's anything that you want to, to throw out there, those emojis can, can go on screen. And this session is being recorded, so we will have a copy of the recording. I know we go through a lot of content. If there's something that's unclear, you can always re-watch it. Um, and then we are staying on a little bit afterwards to answer those specific questions that you might have over the content that we covered. Okay, classes are always more fun if you get to play a game. So if you haven't done one of our sessions before, we have a really fun game incorporated in the training today. You don't have to play, it's just more fun if you would like to. Um, if you want to play a game with us, keep a lookout, okay? Keep a notepad or a mental note of how many TMOCs that you see. If you don't know TMOC, he's the big scary guy with the, the smile, our UT Dallas mascot. I know some people are terrified. Um, but keep track. 
keep a count of how many you see within our presentation today. And at the end of the session, we're going to have a survey available for you. So you can complete that survey and put your guess. Oh, no, there's one. Denison's modeling um, TMOC. Uh, so that's what he looks like. But be on the lookout for it within the presentation. We're going to draw five random winners. So if you don't get the exact number, it's OK. It's not meant to be a high pressure game. Um, we're not going to be sharing your score with anyone, so it's just a fun way to kind of find those little hidden Easter eggs in the presentation. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, we are going to have some giveaways today. We like to do some within the presentation for participation, and then we always do some for our survey. So, afterwards, if you want to give us feedback or if you just want to enter to win some prizes, th that is available to you. So, I put some pictures of some individuals that recently won those prizes from us in a past presentation. Okay, first one's on us. There he is! Ah! That's one. Okay, so go ahead and start marking it. Um, that's your chance to win swag. And we've got some really special OIT and UT Dallas swag that we like to give away. So there he is. Mark down your first one and we'll get going here. I, I did mention recording is available. The best way to connect with us and be sure you're getting that recording, I put the QR code Denison's going to throw that link in the chat here and just to say he already got it. Um, but if you want a copy of our recording, we recommend that you go ahead and follow us on YouTube. Uh, we post all of our trainings on there. We have been hosting these sessions since a, a little, was it before or after? I guess after the pandemic started, um, but it's a blur. We have 40 or 50 uh, recorded sessions on there, if not more, on topics from uh, breakout rooms to PowerPoint to Sway to Excel to using your headset and your team certified devices. So whatever you would like to know, it's there. And if it's not, tell us and we'll, we'll create a training on that. But you can scan that QR code. You can follow us. But I know I always get questions on how can I get a copy of the recording? Where is the recording? So it's there. It is on our YouTube channel. Feel free to subscribe and you'll get notifications of any upcoming trainings or sessions that we're having uh, that get posted there. Okay, just big news. I want to do another raised hands. Raise your hand if you have heard of the technology bar at UT Dallas. Oh, come on. I got to see more hands. I only have two. I only have two. I know there's got to be more. Okay, okay. It just shot up to 12. Oh, one went down already. Maybe we panicked. Do we know about Technology Bar? I'm getting a, a little bit more, but it still seems about half of us haven't heard of it. So uh, that's great. I want to talk to you about it. Technology Bar is our new location on campus. It's at the lower level of the student union. And what it is, is if you need any tech support, if you're having issue with your password, if you're concerned about security on your device, if you need to set up LastPass, Duo, VPN, any, any of the technology that we support, Microsoft 365 products, you're able to walk up in our location and get immediate tech assistance. So if you need that, it's available to you. We posted, this is a, the grand opening. We, we've opened as a soft opening. It's open now. You can go. Uh, they're still tweaking a few things, and we're just kind of finessing a little bit before the grand opening on November 4th, next Thursday. So I would love to personally invite you to come and check out our space. We're really proud of it. We're excited to be able to serve campus on campus in a very easy-to-access location. So if you ever need tech support, feel free to stop by, and especially on our grand opening day, November the 4th. Okay, so ways to access Teams. Raise your hand if you knew that there was multiple ways to get to Teams other than it being installed on your desktop. We're going to do lots of raised hands. Right now there's only one. Okay, they, see, y'all, I have to just pause for a second, and then, and then the hands go up. Okay, so about half knew that there was multiple ways to, to get onto Teams. So I put on here the the myriad methods that you can join a Teams meeting. Um, if you go to office.com, 
That is something we're going to hit hard today in communicating, office.com. I know I got emails and requests from individuals asking about that. That is the kind of the warehouse of all of the Microsoft products. So anything that you might need from PowerPoint to Excel to Word to Teams to Outlook, that's all under office.com. I am going to show you how to get there in just a minute, but I just want you to be aware that would be for the web versions of all of those softwares. You can also, if you don't already have it on your mobile app, um, it's a great way to stay connected to those chats, those meetings. And if you're on the go, Teams will recognize that you're in a meeting on your desktop. And if you need to transfer, it's just the click of a button to transfer over to another device. And it'll carry that audio and your settings with you. I did said I'm going to ask if you don't mind lowering the hands. I got everybody was so great about getting their hands up. And I'll keep asking that because I do uh, like to be able to have that interaction with y'all just as we're kind of tracking along here. And then the, the final way to access it is your desktop application. So all of you uh, should have it installed on your desktop. That's primarily what we'll be showing today because that's generally where most people kind of live in the app. Um, so that's usually what we like to highlight. Okay, and did we see? Let's see, are we keeping? Okay. Okay, we're keeping count. All right, it is time for a live demo. So I'm going to uh, work on switching screens and getting a few other things pulled up. And while I do that, I want to go ahead and uh, submit a poll. This is a question that's going to come up to you. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and launch it, depending on how you have joined this Teams meeting, whether you're on mobile or desktop or um, on the web app, it's, it may show up differently depending on how you've joined. Um, generally, it's going to show up right in the middle of your screen where you can't miss it. It will also appear in our chat, our meeting chat. So if you're on your phone and you're trying to navigate to it, you should be able to see it in the chat. So uh, the question is, what features do you feel most comfortable using in Teams? I like to ask this as our preliminary kickoff question because it helps me know if I need to tailor my presentation to a particular type of content for you today. So if there's, just go ahead and fill that out. Let me know um, what you feel most comfortable. You can select more than one. So go ahead and start checking those boxes. Once you have them checked off, you can hit submit, and then if it's popped up on your screen, it'll disappear. So you don't have to worry that it's going to be there the whole time. I'm going to stop sharing real quick so I can get my other content pulled up for y'all, and we'll wait and see. Denison, keep me apprised. What it, what's what's trending right now? Which, which item do we need to focus in on the most, do you think? Right now, it looks like it's uh, participating, uh, scheduling, and participating in meetings. Oh, that's right very now, good. That, looks like most that they're most are... familiar with, that they're mm -hmm. most comfortable yes, with, the is the meetings part. Exactly. Okay. Uh, and then it looks like the least is breakout rooms. Oh, breakout. That's one of my favorites. Okay, well, we're, we'll definitely be sure, and breakout rooms I have, right now I have it scheduled to talk a little bit about the end. I, it looks like 11% for sharing and co-authoring document, um, feeling really comfortable. So that's a huge opportunity for growth, I feel like, there as well. So let me go ahead and we'll share screen, and I think I'm going to do standout, and we'll see if that works. How's that? Is that okay, Denison? Mm-hmm. Looks pretty, great. Pretty see okay. I'm going to just check my Zoom settings. I'm zoomed at 120. Post in the chat if it needs to be a little bit bigger for you, um, but we'll try to make sure that everybody's able to see that. Okay. All right. Perfect. I'm just checking the chat. Oh, somebody tried to use breakout rooms, and it, it didn't go well, but that's okay. Uh, I do always like to disclose in these sessions, um, we, we don't ever intend to come across as perfect. We are works in progress, just like everyone else here. And technology is uh, meant to be a tool to help to build. And so we're going to show you some of those techniques 
but don't ever feel, I don't want you to ever feel like you're failing because the attempt to try was probably more than what a lot of people have done. And it's okay to try and make a mis- and, and make a mistake when you're trying because that's an opportunity for growth and then you can just get better at it the next time. So I am, I don't mean to brag, but I'm really good at making mistakes. Like really, really good. I make mistakes all the time. Um, my staff helps to correct me and keep me uh, guided. And and so that's, that's part of this is we do this for practice um, to have progress in our learning. So don't feel stressed, okay? So we're going to go through just a couple of things. I just have this um, chat pulled up here, but I always like to call out the settings in Teams because it's kind of hidden. Um, sometimes you might think the three dots are just a little simple decoration there, but it, it is actually uh, for more information. Anytime you see the three dots, think of it as like the end of the rainbow. There's always like a treasure hidden back there. So if you go into those three dots, I do like to call out your settings because we get asked this a lot. Um, how do I get sound to to Teams? How do I change my camera? How do I change my notifications? They're driving me crazy. People keep pinging me. All of that can be controlled within your settings. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview on this and, and let you know that it exists and where it exists. And then when you want that additional information, you can go and drill down into all of these specific areas and get it set up so that it's successful for you. There's no set way of it being a perfect setup. It's truly you cater the the technology to what works for you. My preferences may be totally different than yours. Um, So, but you can just see, you can change your theme, you can change the contrast, how you view teams and, and how those icons appear. The one that I always like to call attention to is your devices. So you'll see here, you can have your speaker and your mic in two separate devices. So if you prefer it coming in or out a certain way, um, I don't like dark mode. I know. Everyone tells me I should. That's, I just got a comment, update to dark mode. I don't know why. I like a lot of like bright and colors. And so it just makes me feel sad when it's dark. Um, so I know, but y'all, that's again, my preference. Y'all, you do what you prefer. Uh, But you can see here, you can pull down, um, depending on if you have multiple headphones connected, multiple devices. Um, For me, there, oh, there I am. Um, If you have multiple cameras set up, you can pick any of these of how you want your teams to display. So it's really important to know how to jump back and forth. And this is a new one that Denison just shared uh, with our campus communicators recently that you can... um, enable this echo canceling information here. So if you're sharing audio, are we able to see that? I can't tell if it's just my screen, Denison. Are we able to see that okay from you? Did mm-hmm. I get bigger? Yep. yep. My no, screen. Looks good. Okay, my screen looks different and there's a lot of me to watch. Um, <laughs> but if you're playing music uh, in Teams or playing a video and you wanna make sure you're not getting that echoey fish tank feeling, you know, if you're in a tunnel and it feels weird, you can enable that echo cancellation and it's going to help ensure that the audio quality comes in really clearly. So, but anyways, these are these are all everywhere you can drill down. If you didn't know, we do have voicemail that you can enable. So if you need to set that up for when people call you, you can determine how, how it goes. And Did you know, raise your hand, y'all, did you know that you can change the team's ringtone? I know, you can change it. So if you get tired, if you, if every time you hear that tone, you kind of feel like you go into a little shell shock, PTSD, I feel like sometimes I hear it and my heart just starts to panic, like, what call am I missing? What's happening? You can change it and be able to change those ringtones, so find... Find one that maybe makes you feel a little happier or more comfortable. Let's see, do I still have, can y'all hear that? Do I still have my audio shared or is it not shared? I didn't share it. It'll just ring in my head. Okay, let me let me stop sharing and reshare because I do want y'all to be able to hear that too. I think that's really cool that that's available. So we'll just click on a few real quick. Okay, so I'm going to scroll here. So depending on what you want, ooh, what's Flutter? 
It's very video game-ish. Uh, but, but depending on what you want, how you'd like it to come through, you can, you can you can change it to get whatever your personal preference is and set it up however you would like. But those are all different depending on if your calls or if you're delegated. You can change all of those ringtones so that way it's familiar to you and it's fun for you, hopefully, to get a call. Uh, so that's all in there. Uh, captions, if you use captions or transcriptions, this is important just to be sure that you have it turned on. For anyone following along with transcriptions in a Teams meeting, this allows you to be identified. So don't feel like it's, it's not stealing your information. It's for people that um, might need that accessibility tool to be able to identify. It can be very hard, uh, especially when cameras are off. And, and you just appear as an icon, it can be hard to identify to somebody who might be hard of hearing, hearing impaired, or deaf to be able to identify who is speaking. So that allows that in the transcription to be able to say, Amanda is talking, and for people to be able to follow along with that. So it's a good accessibility measure to make sure that's turned on. Uh, just while we're here in settings, let's take a quick look to notification. You don't have to get pinged all the time. Y'all, did you know this? You can set up healthy boundaries. So whatever you like to receive those notifications, you can set that up at a time and, and frequency that works best for you. So you can see that my customs are setting. Customs are, oh mercy. My settings are custom set. Does that, okay, I did it, I did it. All right, talking's hard. Um, but you can set up however you would like to be notified in whatever manner. So all of these are ways that you can edit and modify those settings um, so that you can determine when you like to be pinged or, and if you want those sounds or if you want it to be silent. Those are all options available for you. So I'm trying to think. Um, oh, and if we, we're going to go over file sharing in just a little bit. But for sharing those files too, you can determine if you like it to open up in Teams. That's my preference, um, but you can, again, you can determine if you want it to open up in the web browser version, right, or the desktop application version. Um, it just, it's truly personal preference uh, when you share files, how you like. I just like to keep it all in Teams because it's easy for me to have it all in one spot. I know several members of my team prefer the desktop application because the desktop sometimes has a few more bells and whistles on it that they're able to use. So if you, whatever file, the way you like your files to be opened, you are able um, to do that there. Okay, so those are those are all your settings. And one more thing with the magical three dots, I did want to um, call your attention to. If you're wondering if your Teams is ever running a little slow, if it's being a little persnickety, you can always check for any updates to make sure you have the latest and greatest. Those get pushed through but if you're worried that maybe your system didn't connect or something's missing, you can always click the check for updates to get updated. And then I'm going to hover over the about section. Uh, some of you all may remember, does anybody remember or know the, the magical word tap? It was a program. You can do the raise hand. I'm raising my hand for y'all so y'all can see what I mean. Um, but does anyone remember, let's do the raise hand. Does anybody remember or have heard this word tap program that we were in for a while? Just one. Brian Sherwood's on this. Okay, thank you, Dennis. And I'm like, y'all, the rest of my people should be having hands raised. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for participating. Um, so two, great. Um, so TAP was a program that we were in previously, which allowed us to get uh, anything that Microsoft was working on that was testing out, and they would give us um, kind of a, that preview uh, but it wasn't always a stable environment. It wasn't always um, working well. Sometimes things would break and then it caused problems for the rest of us. So we're out of tap, but we do have the option of being in public preview. So this is when a new update is available in Teams that Microsoft is pushing out that's nearly finished that you can get a sneak peek to before it releases to the uh, general audience, before it releases to public. So if you're wanting to, to make sure that the features that you have are the latest and greatest, then you can, don't do it now, don't do it now, don't do it now. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm navigating my mouse there, but I don't want anyone to take action just yet, okay? Don't do it now. 
you can navigate to public preview and select it so that you can get that preview of anything new that they're releasing so that you can be one of the first to test it out. If you do it now, it's going to kick you out of the meeting and you're going to be angry at me because you're going to think Teams failed. It's just because I failed to communicate that. So don't do it now. Um, it's available for you. It'll pop up with a big scary box that makes you feel like you're signing your life away or um, selling a house. Just it's okay. You can click it. You can turn off public preview on and off. So don't feel like you're you're committing to anything for life there. Okay, Denison, I'm checking chat really quick. Oh, I love that question. Um, to yes, I love this. Let's go ahead and drill down here. So on your profile picture up at the top. You can select your profile picture, and again, there's a lot of options uh, there for you. This one's kind of hidden. It's very small, and you maybe not have not noticed it before, but you are able to select that drop-down and select your status. So um, your status is going to be able to tell other people what's happening in your life virtually right now. So do not disturb. We'll block any of those extra calls. It will silence those extra pings and dings of the chat. You will not hear that. That way you can focus on just either presenting or attending your meeting and not be distracted by all that extra information. You can also say that you're going to be back or appear away or offline if you just really need to cut the cord. There's options for you. And if you're like me and you forget, you can select the duration and you can select your status, what you want it to appear as, and um, when you want it to reset. So if you forget to turn off Do Not Disturb, you can set that duration. But these are all options for you to ensure that people are communicating with you the right way possible. So I'm just going to click Available real quick. You'll see mine change to green. I have my Out of Office right now in Outlook. And what's brilliant about these systems is when you have it in Outlook, it also appears automatically in Teams. You don't have to update it two places. So I have my out of office just so if anyone needed to be able to get here, they would be able to read my out of office message. I'm going to go back to Do Not Disturb just so we don't hear those pings and dings. So hopefully that was um, hopefully that was helpful. When you're in a call, it automatically sets you to busy or in a call. It does not automatically set you to do not disturb because sometimes you're in a call, but you still need to be available to answer questions. Do not disturb. That's one of those personal preferences if you want it to be silent. So hopefully that answered that question as well. Okay. We're going to jump into uh, Teams calls now. I kind of showed you around the settings. I just showed you around uh, status and that duration. We're just going to jump in calling real quick, and I have a poll I like to ask. So I'm going to ask another quick question real quick. I have to scroll up to my polls. We're going to launch that. And again, depending on your preview, you may have to scroll. If you're on the desktop version, it should pop up. It just popped up for me. It should pop up in front of your screen. It may be in the chat where you have to scroll through. It, just, it really varies on how you joined and what your specific device is. Oh, that's not the one I meant. Hold on. Hold on. Closing that one. Hold on. I jumped ahead. I may have missed one. Let me see if I can jump to this other one real quick. Sorry, y'all. Sorry. Oh, y'all are already answering it. So great. It just wasn't on calls. So let's hold on and we'll do this one instead. Okay, true or false, you can dial outside phone numbers to call from your Teams account. True or false? True, you can call non-UTD numbers. False, you can only call other team's accounts. So let's see what gets answered. I'm waiting to see. I'm going to pull up those results. Oh, great. Y'all are on top of it. Okay. Oh, oh now some people are changing their mind. Um, so that's great. So yes, you can call other numbers. Teams is meant to work just like a, a phone. So if you need to dial, it's click to dial, right? Um, so you can call. Uh, you can see here all of my, my calls. You can hover over somebody's name to give them a call back. And we do have a visual voicemail. It's 
somewhat accurate. It's not perfect. It's like all AI. It's 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 a work in progress, but you should be able to see. And that mine always say, hey, man, instead of, hey, Amanda. It's just the problem of having that name. It's like, hey, man. Um, so all of my calls say, hey, man, and it's it's OK. It's all right. I know myself. Um, but you can see uh, just that visualization of that voicemail. Uh, hopefully you can see that. And uh, when you click on it, you're able to preview that. Uh, calling attention to uh, just down to the bottom here, if you have multiple devices and need a quick change, if you're getting a call and you want it on your headset so that the office doesn't hear, you can change your audio devices and selection here as well if you just need that quick shift and change. And we went over settings earlier. That's where you would change any of those settings that you want for your phone, for your voicemail, for uh, call forwarding. Okay. I don't think you can put out, um, that was a great question that just popped up. I saw it pop and then it went away for me. Um, <laughs> can you uh, save phone numbers into the directory? So the directory should just be UT Dallas uh, based, but under other contacts, which I might be in the way for this, um, you I know you can have some non-UTD numbers. Denison, do you know if... Uh, if you can add, I'm going to try to add it really quickly. Oh, I don't want to put my cell phone number in there. <laughs> um, so you I just realized. Add, so you can add some numbers, but it's kind of particular, or at least in my testing, I've, I've found that it's a little bit particular, but you can add um, numbers to your own contact base, but it won't actually go to the full directory. That was my understanding as well. So you're not adding it to like the UTD directory. You would just be adding um, dial outside as a number. Yes, and you can dial outside so you don't have to use your personal device. Um, so anyway, so that's, that's just something to be aware of. For me, I just usually uh, click on the buttons to or type in that number and make a quick call if I need to call. Generally, for UTD purposes, though, I would say 90% of the time I would go through chat uh, uh, to make those calls, and we'll show you that here. I think that's probably a good transition. I think I have my chat popped out just so that I don't have to show you all all of the chat settings. So did you all know you can pop out a chat? Let me show you really quickly. Um, I've got one. When you're in a chat that you want to pop out, this little area, air, arrow, arrow, this little arrow, you can select it and it'll pop it out for you as a separate chat. So if you want to just focus then, so for this, we're just going to focus on this one particular chat and be able to demo a few things. I've got a couple people on the call that we're going to help um, put information in here. So I know on our initial survey, y'all said y'all were already like, great masters of Teams chat. So we're going to go ahead and just show a few things to ensure that you are familiar with that and have used that. I'm going to navigate at the bottom here and just show this helps to enhance your chats. If there's any type of function that you're needing, such as bolding, italicizing, um, setting things up into uh, tables, columns, you can do all of that. If you have somebody that needs to get your attention immediately, you can select that it's important and you can determine whether it's important so that it's flagged and very obvious that Denison needs me right now, or you can mark it as urgent. And what urgent does is if there's a critical need, it will ping them again and again and again. Um, so it's kind of like just tapping on the shoulder incessantly, right? If you really need somebody's attention, you can just kind of keep tapping them to get that information that's desired. You can attach files. We can um, do all sorts of emojis. So any of my team, if y'all want to submit some of your favorites. And then, of course, um, GIFs, everybody's favorite. You can submit those. Raise your hand if you've seen um, praise. Let's raise hands if you've seen praise. I know I've demoed this for several people, but I know it might be unfamiliar for some. So I'm just getting a glance. I only saw six hands. Uh, well, that's all six hands. So we're going to go ahead and show praise because I, I, wow, I know, only six hands. 
Um, I love showing this off because this is just a great way to acknowledge to somebody on your team that's done a great job. Um, so if you want to send praise, it's the little metal icon at the bottom. So it looks like, you know, everybody gets a trophy. It's the little metal icon at the bottom. And then you can select whatever option that you want. So you can, I select a team player. I can add Dennison in here and send him a note. And be able to say, okay, this is going to Dennison for being a team player. Here's my little note. You don't have to send a note. It's just a personalization. You're able to preview that. So this is what Dennison is going to be able to see when I uh, send this here. And you'll see it in our chat, too. So you can see, and then there's another GIF. But you'll be able to see um, a quick way of sending praise. This is an awesome way just to follow up and send somebody an acknowledgement because it comes through a little bit differently than that chat and it stands out visually. So when they're scrolling back through or reviewing anything, they're able to see that. It's just a, a simple way to acknowledge your team and thank them. In addition, you can send forms uh, just like the polling that we're doing now. You can add forms to, this is through Microsoft Forms, but it's, uh, it's a polling device when it's used in meetings. But you can add this in anytime you need to ask somebody, um, you know, are you understanding today's lesson? Yes or no? You can submit that really quickly in the chat and be able to get those immediate responses. Um, do you need help on tonight's assignment? Yes or no? You can submit that and be able to, to get all of that information. And these are just quick votes, quick polls uh, within chat, but that's another option to put in there. Um, and then in addition, if you have any other apps like favorite things that you use, you can add those to the chat as well. My team uses OneNote a lot, so that's one thing that we uh, generally have in there as well. So I think that we covered, oh, the reply option, Dennis, and that was the other thing that I wanted to show. This is something that just came out last month, I believe. It was only a month ago or a couple weeks ago. But if somebody sends a message and see, oh gosh, we've already got a long chat thread here and I forgot to reply to TMOC, um, I could select the three, the magical three dots, hit reply, and if you see right here, it's going to pull that exact chat thread so that I can tell Denison, um, awesome GIF, and be able to reply directly to that message. And then Denison was able to reply directly to that. I don't know about you all, but when I'm having a chat, I usually post five different topics at once. My team can completely attest to that. And so before they have a chance to answer the first question, I have four more. And this way they can reply to that particular thread and make sure that they're getting an answer to that. So I'm going to close out of our the big pop-out chat so you can see it here. And I just wanted to cover a few more information on, uh, on the three dots here. So you can see here that, again, the option to pop out if you need to make it bigger to see. You can mute a chat so that it's just silenced for you, which means you would stop receiving those notifications. If it's something you've already dealt with, you don't need to read anything else about, you can mute that. I have this one pinned to the top. So if there are important chats that you have down here, and let's say this is the one for, for today's session, I could pin it so that it always appears at the top of my chat thread. So I have certain ones that are always on top be, because those are the key ones that I communicate with most frequently. So I like to have access to those. You also have the option of hiding. So that's just gonna keep it out of your, your viewpoint for now. So you can have um, options there. So, okay, let's see here. And then if you leave, that means that you would no longer have access to that. At the top right corner, if you forgot to add somebody, you can instantly go up there and add an additional person uh, to your chat so that they can see what you're talking about. You can decide if you want to include that history. You can pull them in for further conversations there. So those are a couple of the tools that you can see in chat. I'm going to... Let's see, I've got a, a couple of quizzes here for you all. So I'll launch these polls just as you're catching up and remembering kind of some of the things that we covered, uh, which of the following 
things are you able to do in chat? Schedule a meeting, send praise, change grades, collaborate on a document, connect to Blackboard Collaborate, send polls. I'll let you go ahead and um, be pulling that up. Denison, I'm going to, while we're doing that, I'm going to pull up maybe the Word document that we were collaborating on. Or if you want to send it as an attachment in the team, if you are faster than I am, we'll see. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. Who's going to win? I'm looking to see. I haven't, let me view these results here. Y'all are busy answering these questions. Well, we got about 27 responses in, so I'm just waiting a second while you finish seeing what all you can do in Teams chat. Aha, and I'm going to win. All right. Inserting a link so that we can collaborate on this document. I know that was one of the things that um, we all were discussing that needed a little bit of assistance with. So I just added the link in here so that we can open that up as a Word document. Let me pull it over here, checking our poll. Okay, good. I got some more responses now. Um, Checking our responses, yes, you can schedule a meeting in Teams chat. You can send praise. You can't change your grades. I know I know students really want to be able to change grades in their Teams chat and just make, give themselves an A. You can't do that. You can collaborate on a document, which we're about to demo. It does not connect to BB Collaborate, and you can send polls. So that was great. We had a lot of, um, a lot of responses there and, and good clarifications on some of those. Okay, so we'll go ahead um, and and I want to share uh, sharing a document. So I did promise that I was going to show with you office.com really quickly. So I typed into office.com. I'm already signed in. It's going to ask for you to, if you're not signed in today, enter your net ID and password to authenticate. But I love being able to show this off because you can see at the upper left corner, you can select and be able to see all of the Microsoft products that you have access to, and they're all stored in one place. So it's very easy to just grab and go with the content that you need. So for us, uh, Dennis and I already have a Word document that we created. I just was able to select, select it from here in Word, and I was able to find it in my recent thread of ones that I had recently worked on. So I'm going to jump back over um, because everything on office.com is stored on the cloud, backed up on the cloud, which means that you can access it anywhere. You don't have to have a UTD device. You don't have to be at home. You don't have to be in office. Uh, you can be really anywhere, anytime, and be able to, to work on a file. So Denison, as I talk and kind of navigate, feel free to type in whatever commentary you have from opening it. That's a really big field for you to play in, Denison, so let's just keep it classy. <laughs> um, but you can share files this way. It's not just in Word. It's in Excel. It's in PowerPoint. Anything that you're working on, you can share that file and collaborate with somebody else on it simultaneously. Um, and so you can see I am typing, Denison's typing at the same time, and the, the little names here, you can kind of hover over. Seisha, I don't know if you have access to this too. I'm going to call you out to see if you're able to um, jump on it too from our chat thread. That way you could be editing, but you can hover over the names and just see where people are in the document, what they're doing. If you did need additional people to be able to access a document at any time, you're able to share. Mine's going to be slow since I'm sharing so many things right now. But you should be able to, I'm going to try resharing that one, that one faster. So by clicking the upper right corner, the share buttons in the same place, depending on um, Microsoft product. So if you're in Excel or PowerPoint, it's always there. So you're able to share and you can send people the link to directly access this document. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say that 
people at UTD can access it. I'm going to hover over this little pencil icon because I want people to be able to edit it. There might be something that you're sending that you don't want edited. You just want them to review. So depending on what your needs are, you can add in somebody's name and be able to add them to that document and press send or you can copy link or open Outlook. Either way. So if you press send, it's going to send Brian an email that he can click on that link in the email, open it up, and immediately start joining in on the fun if he should, should want to and be able to edit with us. So you can see here, Seisha joined us, Denison's here. It gives everybody a different color. You don't get to pick your color, uh, but you can just see multiple people working on it at one time. So we're going to do a quick raised hands. Raise hand. How many people of you? How many people regularly use this collaboration um, availability that that's in our Microsoft products? How many of you regularly use collaborating on a document? Yeah, man. Great. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, I wanted to jump in one really quickly. Um, can I have you um, unshare and reshare your screen? It looks like it's showing up for some users um, differently. Absolutely. Were you doing that to distract and write something funny? <laughs> Is that better? Did yeah. it show? Did it appear differently, or do I need to appear it differently? Mm, it looks like um, try a different presentation mode because it looks no like problem. right now it's showing you it's actually doing a full cutout instead of just like a. I actual. thought so. I thought so. I, I thought that was weird too, and I couldn't tell if it was just my preview. Oh, that's terrible. It's doing it there as well. Mm. All right. I'm just going to share it as a big screen. But I shared the wrong. <laughs> or see. Okay. Word document over there on that screen. This is what happens when you have more screens than brain cells, I think. <laughs> There's so much. Fun. Okay, I thought it was presenting funny, and I don't know why it suddenly changed the cutout. That's mm -hmm. bizarre. Um, but anyway, so this you should be able to see big screen now. You can see multiple people posting pictures, saying that they're here. Brian's on as well. So everyone's able to um, collaborate and be able to, to comment at the same time. So, and if you haven't taken a little sneak peek, uh, our students have decorated pumpkins and it's on our Instagram account. So uh, you're able to, to go to our Instagram account and vote on your favorite pumpkin decorations. So, okay. I am gonna check my notes real quick. Was there anything that I missed, Denison, in sharing and collaborating before I move on? I think you're good. I mean, I think we, we've showed everybody so many of the amazing things that we're, you know, or the collaboration kind of can do. So, yeah. Okay. I'm going to launch a poll real quick. We, we missed it earlier, but I would love to just make sure and clarify this with everyone because it's a question we get all the time. If you mute a chat, does it mute it? True or false? Muting a chat mutes it for everyone in the chat. When you mute a chat, does it mute it for everyone? I'm, oh, I hit applause on accident. Sorry. <laughs> Let's see. I'm going to view those results real quick as they're coming in. And then if I can ask if uh, for those that have access to be able to turn their cameras on, uh, which I know is only a few of y'all, um, so, and so answer the question correctly, false, muting a chat, uh, mutes it for everyone. False. It just mutes it for you, so don't feel it's not unfriending anybody if you mute a chat. Feel free to mute it just to silence it for yourself. But for those of you who have access to turn cameras on and want to, we're gonna um, I'm gonna stop sharing this for just a second, and we'll share um, spotlighting. So if there's anyone else on the call, anybody? No. Okay. Nobody's ready. Nobody's ready. So it's up to you and me, Denison. I'm going to share my screen, so it's going to share uh, Denison again. So I know it's going to look a little funny, but I just want to make sure everyone's able to see what I'm seeing here. So if you wanted to be able to spotlight a person, it's going to spotlight it.
for everyone. So everyone in the session will be able to see, and it's going to appear differently for y'all on your end, but you should be able to see me big screen, and we can do multiple spotlight um, so that Denison is also seen. Um, and so if anyone else was on camera, you could spotlight them as well um, to be able to have multiple people pinned up big and to be able to be seen. There's a difference between spotlighting and pinning. If you hover over someone's video feed, y'all can do this now in the session just for your own personal um, usage here. You can hover over somebody's video feed and uh, see to, next to their name that you can decide to pin their video. I've stopped spotlighting, so now you can. Um, but you can hover over and be able to pin that video and that just allows you to focus on that individual more clearly. So anytime you're in a session and you're just like, I just really need to see what Denison's reactions are, you can pin it and no one will know. It won't be for the whole group. It'll just be so that you can watch Denison. So those are some options available uh, just so you know that. So Denison, I think we're going to switch over to you now. I know, I'm sorry, we just have a couple minutes left. I just saw the time. But let's go over uh, real quick because I, I believe that our initial poll said that people were fr pretty comfortable scheduling and participating in meetings. So I'm going to move past that. But, but I do want to show that join screen before a meeting. Um, spotlighting, Monica just asked, spotlighting, if you hover over uh, the video feed, which you all probably can't do in this webinar. So let me, I'm going to reshare real quick again, Dennison, before I let you jump in. I'm hovering over Denison's three dots here, and it's spotlight for everyone. Because this is a webinar, it's a little different. Um, you have to be the meeting organizer to be able to have that, um, and I've restricted some access just so things don't move around uh, while we're presenting. All right, Denison, I'll let you go ahead and, and show a little bit about that join screen, and then we can touch quickly on breakout rooms before we drop off. Awesome. Thank you. Um, can everybody can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Right. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and do it quickly and share um, what happens when you go to join a meeting. Um, I'm sure everyone's seen this by this point, but it, it can be a little bit strange. Um, plus, I know sometimes I just click straight through it and don't actually pay attention. So um, so what happens is when you go to a meeting and you want to join it, so right now I have this little meeting here that I can uh, jump into. Uh, this is a screen that you'll be presented with. Um, and so within this screen, what happens is uh, you first have controls for your camera. So you can turn that on or off. Um, since technically right now I am actually using my camera, which I'll turn off my camera really quickly. Um, it's probably not going to grab it. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> um, so you get that, and then you also get a chance to um, do different backgrounds for you. Uh, this is where you can select your background before you jump into your meeting, which is really nice. Um, so you can go through a whole set of cool backgrounds that they have, as you can see over here. Um, so turning off my camera, because you don't have to see my messy room. Um, Next, uh, what you can also check out is you can work on your computer audio. So this is anything that is dealing with um, how uh, everyone is able to hear you. Um, and this is also a quick access to um, when it comes to any of your device settings. So setting up your head, uh, your headphones, your microphone, your camera, if you have an external camera, or even your integrated camera. So you can set it all, all here, which is really helpful. Um, I should also say this, um, if you are actually close to any of uh, the team's rooms that we have on campus, which is really, really cool, um, if you're anywhere close or in proximity to it, you'll actually see that room name pop up, um, and you can select it. So then that way your audio and your video will come through there. Um, so that's a really, really cool and very helpful feature um, to actually have. And then once you have everything nice and set up, you can hit that Join Now button, and you'll be uh, thrown right into the meeting. And 
trying to think. I think that's everything that you can kind of get through this quick um, join meeting uh, section. So I'll hand it back over to Amanda. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome. Uh, we did get a quick question. That, is there a way to hide the participants, I guess, so you don't see them um, on screen and uh, when when you're presenting and and truly people are they're going to show up visually in some way unless you're in a team's live event which is a whole nother session on that and then you would not see those participants um, in the panel so right. great great question i'm going to go ahead and jump in i'll start sharing again here and we're going to jump into, I'm just going to give a very high level on breakout rooms because we can send you a, a link or uh, Akshaya, if you're on too, if you want to grab the link to the recent breakout room session that we did and plug that link from YouTube in the chat, that would be fabulous because we did do an extensive training on breakout rooms. I went into my calendar, which is color coordinated. Yes, it is. And I went into a um, meeting I had already set up earlier today. So I just opened that up and I already have a people assigned to that. So attendees, so to speak. From there, you can select breakout rooms at the top. You're able to create a room, however many rooms you want. I think it's up to 50. So you can create those rooms and add them in. And you can assign those participants by clicking Assign Participants. And I know I'm going through this quickly, but we do have a more in-depth training on how to do that. And you can choose automatically, so the system uh, will do it, or manually if you have specific people that you're wanting to put into those rooms. But that, in short, it just shows up as these tabs on top. So the same place where you would access your whiteboard, your attendance, Anytime you've taken notes together, this is another way you can collaborate in Teams. Those are all available for you um, when you open up that Teams meeting in your, in your calendar. So, okay, I'm just trying to see if we, I know we're running quickly out of time. I'm going to go ahead and, let's see, scan here, move this over, open it up real, oh, nope, maybe. I'll open this up real big because I know that we're about out of time, so I just want to allow an opportunity for, for those of you who participated in our game. Uh, we'll post a link in the chat, but you can also grab the QR code here. Um, if you want to just scan that, that's going to link to our survey. So you can enter all of the team ox that you've been dutifully counting throughout today's presentation. And there'll be one of the last lines in that survey is an opportunity for you to guess and to see how many that were entered. We're going to uh, draw five winners from the survey no matter what. So if you want to go ahead and submit that, you can. It does help to get feedback from you all as to what we, we need to cover or, or if we missed covering anything. There's a lot of content and everyone's needs are unique and I completely understand that. So uh, with that, we're hitting the two o'clock hour. Thank you for attending. I am going to uh, stop the recording. We're gonna move forward with answering questions. I will, for those who are able to stay, who would like to ask a couple of quick questions? We've got about five additional minutes, five, 10 minutes maybe, where we can answer some of those questions for you. So uh, feel free to grab that survey link and I'm gonna, if you want to stay on, feel free and ask a particular question. Otherwise, thank you so much for attending. I am allowing mics and cameras now, so you should all be receiving a notification that if you need to unmute and ask any questions, you can. Um, and I do see some a couple questions coming in. And Akshaya posted for breakout. Thank you, Akshaya. I'm just scanning. I thought I saw a question and then it disappeared. I think it was, that will teams take attendance? Shalanda asked, will teams take attendance? Yes, absolutely, it will take attendance for you. At the end of an event, it will show up in the chat, but you are able to, during the event, go into that participant list and 
uh, I'm going to stop sharing the QR code and reshare my screen so y'all will see your, your icons here duplicated in a second. But I want to demo this. Go to the participant screen. Under participants, you can um, download the attendance list. So if you're in the meeting and you want that attendance right away, you can get it there. Otherwise, you can also get it in the Teams chat or on top of the, let me pull out of this one, on top of the Teams chat, you can also get it there. So I'm pulling that other one up too to be able to show that you are able to get attendance. Uh, we've had a couple of little quirks and issues with attendance reports, so sometimes it's better to pull it in meeting if you want that accurate number. Otherwise, you can go into the actual event from your calendar and you're able to double click on it and get the attendance at the top. Great question. Okay, am I, Denison, did I miss any other questions? I, that's all I see in the chat right now. Um, everything that I've seen, I think there was one actually at the very I see, top. I do see one and it said, I think it's Kim's. Is there an easy way um, I'm, to do it? I'm assuming meetings with external people um, anyone that, I don't know if she meant it, maybe breakout rooms, because that was right around the timestamp. It was breakout rooms. It was, okay. So you yeah. should be able to, anyone that joins that meeting, um, that ha when you set up the meeting, you invite them. If they accept the invitation, then they should show up here for you to be able to pre-schedule them into a room, Kim. So they should be able to show up just like anybody else. They do have to accept that invitation in order for you to pre-schedule and dump them in a room. So I hope that, I hope that helped. Does that clarify? Thanks. I will mess with it some more. Yes. Yeah, sure. No problem. Ginger asked if we could email the breakout room guide. We absolutely can. Can you record yourself not for a meeting but to show later? Yes. Sheila, I love this question. Yes, you can absolutely record yourself. You can set up a Teams meeting for yourself anytime that you want to. You can make as many meetings as you like. And uh, if in that meeting at the top bar, it's those three little dots. You can record yourself. I've done several trainings in, in that where I'm just recording it by myself alone to be able to get that information out. And you can record uh, your screen. You can screen share whatever you need to. You can do that in a Teams meeting. Absolutely. Breakout rooms do also work for non-UTD emails. They just have to be sent the invitation and accept that invitation. Teams is, is open for, for external participation, so they should be able to join that meeting and have access with it. Absolutely. Great questions. Okay, y'all, I'm not seeing any other questions. Uh, know that you can always reach out. We're uh, with OIT. We're here to help. So you can always reach out by contacting the help desk, uh, emailing. We have live chat on the OIT website. So anytime you have a question, it's a great way to get those quick um, answers because we have students on standby all the time waiting to answer your questions. So anytime you need us, know that we're here. And I thank you all for attending. I hope this was helpful. I appreciate your time after lunch. All right. Bye, y'all.